Welcome to a new uh, episode of WWE SmackDown Afterlife. And I'm um, basically going to be covering um, pretty much SmackDown, basically. And uh, not not too much happened on SmackDown, but um, let's just go ahead and talk about it. The show started with... Uh, well, first of all, I just want to talk about SmackDown for just a minute. SmackDown really doesn't mean as much as it used to be. You know, because it would actually advance angles on that show. They would actually have some important stuff happen on there. Uh, now it's basically like Raw, really. A, a lot of the same things happen on there, happen on Raw, you know. It's almost like Raw replay, basically. And uh, some people have called it like Blue Raw replay or something like that, you know what I mean? Uh, it's very true, you know. It, it can be really repetitive, you know. So anyway, the show starts out with Edge and Christian, and they pretty much do the same thing that they do on Raw. Um, they kind of talk about their events of Raw, but um, they don't really follow up on it. And then a limo comes up on the time tron, and J and J Security come out. Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury. And they step into the ring and they grab a microphone. And um, Jamie Noble talks first. And I don't know if you've ever heard him talk, but he has terrible mic skills. And uh, he just can't. He's just not very good on the mic. And I, I never really remembered him really talking that much when he was an active competitor. I, I don't think he did. I don't think he talked that much, though. I remember a few promos of him uh, back when he had this whole Trevor Park trash gimmick with uh, Nydia back in 2002. And I remember them doing promos where, like, Noble's character won, like, uh, some type of inheritance, of inheritance from a family member or something like that. And uh, he, he was talking... A lot um, back then, but other than that particular angle, I don't really remember him talking that much. So, um, and he didn't really talk that much um, in this promo either. It was mainly Joey Mercury doing the talking, and Joey Mercury is actually pretty solid on the mic. Um, he he has this kind of announcer esque voice that I never really expected to hear out of him. And I've never really heard Joey Mercury talk. Like when he was with uh, Eminem, um, Molina, and uh, Johnny Nitro slash John Morrison. I don't think I ever heard him talk that much, if at all. But um, he has a pretty cool voice. And yeah, I, I remember him from Eminem. You know, back when he had like the whole long hair and the whole kind of paparazzi gimmick that he and that team had. But, um... So they basically kind of read a statement from the authority and pretty much said that it, it claimed that they knew nothing about Seth Rollins attacking Edge and that he acted on his own and that they apologize and stuff like that. And that it says that the authority recognized uh, the contractual right that Edge and Christian hosts in SmackDown, but they put J&J security kind of observers, basically. And, um, Edge and Christian, you know, they were still in charge, so they make Ryback for this big show, and Rusev versus Roman Reigns. And so, that was a decent promo. I mean, I, I liked it. I mean, I do, do like J&J security. Um, they sort of remind me of, um, they kind of remind me of the Stooges, the corporate Stooges back in, um, Attitude Error, Pat Patterson, Ger Gerald Briscoe, that's who they remind me of. And uh, I think they do a, a good job as being these kind of losers, or as Christian called them on SmackDown, dork chops. Which I really hope that that nickname sticks. And that and Geek Squad, that was pretty funny as well. So, here's where things start to go wrong. Bray Wyatt versus Eric Rowan on SmackDown unannounced no build up at all um, you would think that this would at least get some build up or at the very least some um, 
you thought this could be a, like a pay-per-view match, but it wasn't. It was just given away, unannounced, for free, on free TV. And it's just like, what? Why? And to to be fair, they do kind of, they, they try and they tell a story. They try to tell a story between the two, you know, because why it's all like, Rowan, don't you remember me? We're not meant to fight. Anyway, it's just stuff like that. And it's just like, maybe if it had better booking and better build up, that could have worked. But when you just throw it on TV, on SmackDown, no less, unannounced, that's just when um, it didn't really do anything for me. And the match, it wasn't that long. It only got four minutes, and which, uh, which which sucked. But, um, and afterwards, Wyatt did a whole promo, promo about his and Dean Ambrose's match, Ambulance match at one Raw. Which I can't wait for that. I think that's going to be really cool. Because they've had some great matches uh, the past couple of weeks. So hopefully it'll be good. So. And backstage, Edge and Christian. And this happened throughout the entire night. Pretty much throughout the entire night. They sort of uh, mess with J&J security. And uh, they practice their five second pose for no reason. And uh, J&J did their own version. And stuff like that. And then the next match was Goldust, Stardust, and Adam Rose versus R Truth and the Usos. And this was a decent match. Um, it really wasn't all that. Um, Adam Rose's heel turn, I'm really not sure how it's going to work. I mean, I'm assuming that he's going to feud with the Bunny whenever they decide to bring that back. Um, I have no idea how it's going to work. Um, but who knows? Because I I do like Adam Rose. I I do I do like his little party gimmick. So I hope I hope it works. And Golden Stardust couldn't really. They couldn't mean any less than they do now. Like ever since Goldust was pinned by freaking El Torito on the Christmas edition of Raw, their stock has went way down. And I hope that they can uh. And I hope that they can come back and really start to mean something again. Because they're one of the few tag teams on here that I actually do like. So afterwards, we basically get a lot of Raw replays. And that's really one of the weak, weak parts of the show, basically. Basically, one of the weakest parts of SmackDown is when they'll show a lot of replays from Raw. And sometimes they'll show a couple of replays. Sometimes from the same thing. So, I wish I could rely less on that. But, then next up was Ryback and Big Show. And this was a really boring match. Anyone who knows me, who listened to the last... uh, Last Aftermath show knows that I hate Ryback with a passion. <clears throat> I just don't like him. I don't like the gimmick. And Big Show. Big Show won his, what, 1,500,000th heel turn. Just um, really irrelevant. I don't know. I, I honestly can't remember the last time Big Show was relevant. Probably 2000. Four, maybe. I don't know. But this was just a boring match. Not very good. I did like that Big Show targeted Ryback's surgically repaired um, ankle to the ankle or leg or whatever. I I like that. But other than that, it just wasn't very memorable. Not that I'm really surprised, but... And after the match, Rusev... uh, Try to attack Ryback. Oh, and Ryback lost by count out. Which, who cares about that? But, um, it seems like they're going to try and go for a Rusev slash Ryback feud. Most likely for the United States Championship. And if Ryback is the one that ends Rusev's undefeated streak, that is just going to be terrible. 
That's going to be terrible. I don't want to see that. I don't think anybody wants to see that. Like, I'd rather see Roman Reigns do it. Like, on the road to WrestleMania. Sort of like how Shawn Michaels and the Vladimir Kozlov's um, streak. Um, if anybody remembers who that is. Um, sort of a similar Russian guy. Just not as good or as charismatic as Rusev. But, anyway. Backstage, Edge was sitting... Uh, he was leaning against the wall by himself. J&J asks, where's Christian? He's in the bathroom. And Noble ends up going check on him. Turns out, he walks into the ladies' room. And Edge is covering up the girls' room, girls room toilet. <laughs> that was, um, I, I had to admit, I did get a laugh out of that. It was just, it, it was sophomore, but... Yeah, that that's the way Edge and Christian's characters are, you know, the kind of juvenile kind of humor. N not to the DX extent, but you know, anybody who's watched Edge and Christian knows what I'm talking about. So next up was Lost Matadors versus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, and it was pretty much it was pretty much stated that Tyson Kidd and Cesaro were not only a tag team, but they were going to try and go for the tag titles, which is interesting, and I do like that. And I, I, I'm i glad that they're at least doing something with Cesaro, because I think he's a very talented guy. Tyson Kidd, I'm not a huge fan of. He's just kind of bland to me, Not doesn't have that much of a personality, doesn't have a lot going for him. But um, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd win... Uh, it's, it's pretty cool, but unfortunately, this is where, so Cesaro and Tyson Kidd are basically going to be a tag team, but, um, the commentary for this one was terrible, like, even more so than usual, and, uh, this is mainly JBL's fault, or whoever is telling JBL to say this. This, but um, the announced team is just terrible. Uh, no matter what show it is nowadays, it's just terrible. And this was mainly JBO is doing. And here's what he said. He said that at one point the Cesaro swing didn't hurt that much. I'm like, wow. Are they? Is he trying to bury Cesaro? Are they trying to bury him? Like you do not say that on commentary. You just don't. No, you just, I mean, wow, just, ugh. That's just frustrating, but. Anyway, next up was a scheduled match between Curtis Axel and uh, Dean Ambrose, and it never got started. Uh, Ambrose just attacked um, Curtis Axel, did the dirty deeds on him. Ambrose basically cut a promo about the Ambrose match, and that was it. And then Ascension... And Ascension's match was up, and they just faced two jobbers. Um, not really that special of a match. It lasted about a minute or so, but it was still cool to see the Ascension. And uh, here's what made me laugh. Um, before the match, there was some type of vignette, vignette um, before where they said, Burst, the Road Warriors, then Demolition. Now the Ascension. And I'm like, oh no. And if they weren't already unfairly compared to the Road Warriors, now they're going to be just mercilessly compared to them. Because, man, I mean, I love the Ascension. I really do. I love their look. I love the gimmick. But I just wish that they didn't do that. I wish that promo didn't happen. Because you, you shouldn't compare them to the Road Warriors. Just let them be their own tag team. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Ascension does next. Uh, I'd like to think that they're going for the tag titles, but it might be a bit too early for them. But who knows? Maybe we'll find out more on, on Raw. And then next up, Edge and Christian, another Edge and Christian segment. And um, they pretty much said, J&J said, okay, it's time for you to leave, you know. When you're ready, you can walk out the door. And uh, J&J brought in some type of muscle and fitness cover with Triple H and Stephanie, and they um, 
Edge Christian basically, you know, kind of DX'd it a little bit um, through um, everything, kind of defaced it, a big beak on Triple H, giving Stephanie a monobrow and an uh, iHeart I HBK uh, tattoo on H on Triple H, which is, which was pretty funny. And then finally, the main event was Roman Reigns versus Rusev. And uh, this was a this was an okay match, you know, sort of what you would expect. And then Rusev, you know, gets disqualified. You know, sort of you kind of knew that Rusev's streak wasn't going to end on SmackDown, but Big Show. Once again, interferes. This time after the match, he was on commentary like he was on Raw. So there was at least a moment of surprise, I guess. And then Roman Reigns pretty much does what Big Show did to him on Raw. So he was pretty much the opposite of what happened on Raw. He turned the, t the tables quite literally on Big Show. And that ends SmackDown. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for SmackDown. Not uh, a lot of, of things happened on there. You know, you didn't really miss that much if you missed it. I wouldn't say it's exactly like Raw. Like, if you if you really wanted to, to see what happened on SmackDown, I suggest watch um, the beginning of the Edge and Christian J&J promo and all their antics throughout the night because that was probably the best uh, thing about it. Other than that, not too much happened, and that's the thing with SmackDown. You, not, you just don't care about it, though. That's the thing. You just don't care. And uh, they don't really give you a reason to care. And, um, it's basically just a Raw replay, you know. And I kind of wish that SmackDown and Raw were their own distinct shows again, but that's part that that'll probably never happen. But anyway, this was SmackDown Afterlife. Hope you enjoyed listening, and I'll be coming back with I'll be coming back with Raw Afterlife number two. So that should be interesting, and I'll see you then.